Well, Lord Christopher Monkton has been very, very gracious to be with us. He has another interview coming up. He'll be with us five minutes into the next hour. So specifically, the the talks are in trouble. They are somewhat of a failure, but but you're saying they will get their structure of global government, and that is a great defeat to liberty, but we then need to oppose it. Uh, you're saying really the final day is tomorrow. It may go into Saturday. Lord Monkton, explain that to us. Yes, tomorrow is the final full day of the of the conference, and the way the script for these things usually works, as I said earlier, we've had the leaked document by the Danish government at the beginning. That's part of the standard script. We've had the delegations walking out, first the Africans, then the Chinese. That's part of the standard script. Then we've had the demonstrations with the function-wielding police. That happened earlier, to, uh, earlier this week. That's part of the script. Then we have the endless news that it's all going to be a complete failure and nothing will be agreed at all. That's part of the standard script. Then we will get, and you heard it here first, the all-night session at the end during which Obama calls them all together and says, come on, chaps, we've got to go the last mile, we've got to get the agreement. And what they will agree at the end of the all-night session when they come out with their stubbly chins and their wan faces and the bag <laughs> of the eyes and the smile saying we've done it, they will agree on the one thing which is what the UN has wanted all along, and Maurice Strong has wanted all along, they will agree on what is being called the institutional framework, but which is actually these interlocking bureaucracies, very expensive and very powerful, that will constitute the world government. Once they've got the bureaucracies in place, they will gradually, by successive treaties and agreements down the years, transfer more and more power to the bureaucracy. So the key thing they've got to achieve here, and if they don't achieve it here, they never will, is to get this bureaucracy in place. That is what they're going to agree to. But if they can't get the United States Senate to sign on, then how do they get it through? I guess they just continue by, by stealth, death by a thousand cuts, just like EU expansion was built. They'll, they'll do it, first of all, you see, with all the countries that do agree. And then the United States will find herself isolated. That will be the game. And under a huge pressure on Obama to conform, uh, he will then try to find ways of covertly funding this. And he finds that, that he can't do that because I think the Republicans in the, in the Senate in particular have woken up to the dangers now. And they're going to fight him if he tries anything unconstitutional. Um, but eventually the hope will be that if you put the bureaucracy there, you get all the other nations to start funding it eventually you will get a U.S. administration that will just get too tired of resisting it and will eventually sign So we need to get on the offensive and start removing their bureaucracy. So overall, is Climate Gate, is this year's Copenhagen, what the U.N. called the most important meeting ever, is this a defeat for them, a setback? Uh, I mean, as a general, in 60 seconds, to the troops, Lord Moncton, what is our situation? Uh, what is your report, your briefing to us? Uh, what is the state of our fight? My briefing to you is this. World government is coming because the leaders of the West have given up. They no longer care about democracy. They no longer care about the truth about the climate. They are willing to go along with this world government because they see roles for themselves in that world government in exactly the same way as the leaders of the EU did. And we saw them squabbling just a few weeks ago over who was going to become the first permanent president of this ghastly dictatorial entity because they were going to get more power as president of the EU without ever having to face an election than they would ever have at home. And the same thing is, is the case here. And I think the way we can attack this world government, which is going to be set up in Copenhagen, and they are going to get away with that, is to demand that unless it is an elected government, we will have no party. Absolutely. We'll come back with a final five minutes and continue with solutions. And ask Lord Monkton, was he able to wake up any of these climate cultists? Make no mistake, we're in a war for liberty and freedom, not just for our children and their children, but for current freedom. This is authoritarian tyranny. It is despotism. These people are tyrants, and Lord Monckton and many others are fighting them. I hope everyone will get my DVD, Endgame, that exposes their eugenics population reduction plan for world government.
And, of course, follow the republic that shows how the green takeover is the plan to destroy our country. That's the heart of this new film. You can get free T-shirts and free DVDs until Christmas at InfoWars.com. You can still order today and get these shipped out before Christmas in most areas of the United States. also wanted to tell you the website for our guest be sure and visit it. Incredible information, reports, videos, exposing the fraud of man-made climate change. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org. All right. In the three and a half minutes we have left, Lord Moncton, uh, on this eve of the final day of this, of the, of this wicked summit, um, are we having victories? Do we have the initiative? Where do we stand? And then in closing... Were you able to wake up any of the of the UN uh, zombies? Let's first of all get one thing clear, and that is that there is no scientific basis for anything that this conference is proposing to do. There is no global warming problem. There has been no global warming for 15 years. There has been global cooling for nine years. It's now known from paper after paper in the scientific literature that the effect of CO2 on temperature is a tiny fraction of what the UN pretends it is. The science is now clear. The debate, effectively, in the scientific community is over. There isn't a problem. Of course, many of the scientists who've been making a fortune out of this don't want to admit it. But the science, on the science we have won, on the economics also we have won, even if the UN were right about the science and the effect of warming uh, that CO2 has, then it would still take 41 years of our current rate of emission before we had even raised global temperature by a single Celsius degree. So uh, even if we were waiting another 10 years and did absolutely nothing to see which way the temperatures go and whether any of this really is real, that would be the cheapest and most responsible thing to do because the worst that could happen, even if we did nothing for that time, is an extra quarter of a degree Celsius, which is totally harmless on any view. So we've won on the science. We've won on the economics. There is no truth or reality behind any of what they're saying. And yet, we are going to lose on the bureaucracy because they are going to set up a world government. How then do we deal with this? Well, I think what we've got to do is to make it clear that we are still going to regard ourselves as democratic countries, even if they try to take our democracy away. And we will not pay for this monstrous world government. And we will not vote for any U.S. representative who have any truck with this world government. We're going to have to say to our representatives, do you support this world government or don't you? Because if you don't, we will vote you out of office. Use your democracy while you still have it. Try to make sure that any U.S. representatives who go along, whether in the Senate or in the House, with the notion of a world government which you should pay for, anyone who supports that on the basis of what we now know from Climate Gate. Uh, and confirming my own researches show the whole thing is fraud, as I said to Pachauri. I confronted him with the word fraud two days ago, and he was very taken aback. He was visibly shaken. He himself has enormous financial vested interest in this. He has continued to be chairman of the Tata Steel Industries Energy Research Institute, which is currently tendering, among other things, for an enormous UN contract to... Um, clean up the Kuwaiti oil fields, and yet he is a senior official of the UN. This man deserves to go to jail. What we're going to see, I think, is that we are not going to tolerate these people making money out of us and corruptly doing so and, and pretending that the science says what it doesn't. Absolutely. Some of, people, some of these people are going to go to jail, and what we must do when this, this world government is set up is to make it plain that we will leave. Absolutely. Lord Christopher Moncton, thank you so much for covering Copenhagen for us. Thank you for spending time with us.